coming. The official truck of idling for 30 minutes, regardless of the weather. Dodge Cummins, the official truck of married incels. Cummins, the official truck of posts that say, I've been fighting my whole life ever since I was born. I graduated from the school of hard knocks. I have more stepfathers than my truck has fuel filters. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the official car of alimony payments, and now that's what I call music. Dodge Shadow, the official car of playing a shareware copy of Doom while listening to Enter the Wu-Tang. This is the official car of your ex-girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. The one she won't stop complaining about because she's clearly in love with the guy. A relationship that's sadder than a urinal without enough water pressure to flush the pee, let alone move that wad of gum in there. It just makes the piss rise. This is the official car of that one kid who never lived down the experience of calling his teacher mom in the fifth grade. 2006 Ford F-150 Super Cab, the official car of your middle school's upcoming production of Your Car is a Giant Phallus, Charlie Brown. Ford Fairmont, the official car of riding your daughter and son-in-law out of the wheel after they show up with a fat stack of assisting living brochures. Here comes Grandpa in his ill-fitting swing dance trousers, sloshing around the corner like a condom filled with buttermilk. Dodge Cummins, the truck that coined the phrase Rust free. Yo, I got a Cummins! Well, that's cool, what do you tow? Nothing! The Chevy Caprice is the official car of the LA riots and drug deals gone sideways. It looks like excess and it steers like your college girlfriend. The off-white paint is not unlike the yellowed tooth enamel worn down by a lifetime of A-treat soda. It's simultaneously fashionable and antiquated, just like Jackie O's pillbox hat or excessive pubic hair. 1992 Chevy Caprice, the official car for driving to the gym and parading around the locker room and never getting dressed after you work out. Just constant old man junk. Flopping around, never getting dressed, never getting dressed, talking about the Penguins, talking about the Phillies, never getting dressed. All I can do is avert my eyes from a penis petting zoo of 50 and 60 year olds. 89 Buick Century, the official car of- I cut out a newspaper article I want you to read. Here it is. Now you read this, it will teach you something. Buick Century, brought to you by- You know, this may be Grandma's last Christmas. Buick Century! No, no, this year is gonna be Grandma's last Christmas. P.T. Cruiser. The official car of getting your nine-year-old son a balloon-tired mountain bike to make up for pawning his DS Lite in order to buy loose tobacco and zigzags. This is the official car of Magic the Gathering and long walks in the cemetery. The Honda Odyssey is the official car of middle-class malaise and the vast chasm of disappointment between expectations and reality. Because this is what happens when you lock crotches without putting a hat on it. You'll find yourself in a minivan that goes through transmissions faster than Larry King goes through wives. This is the pine box that houses the shriveled corpse of the single life. It's the vehicle driven by the mother hen of the group. You know, that one woman who announces, We all came together and we're all leaving together. Honda Odyssey, sponsored by Easter Egg Photos at Sears Portrait Studios. This is the official car of people who feel bad about going to Walmart, so they bite the bullet, pay a little more, and go to Target, but they completely ignore the mom and pop stores that could have used their business. The purchase of an Odyssey signifies the official point in your life at which blowjobs become something that is strictly for birthdays, and even then only begrudgingly. Honda Odyssey, sponsored by pregnancy cravings and the eventual late night trip to the store for apple butter and pretzels from Snyder's of Hanover. Chrysler Concord, the official car of I don't want a chip on my debit card, that's how they get ya! Chrysler Concord, the official car of Mega Millions and powdered mashed potatoes and Ham's beer. Chrysler Concord, the car for you if your dress pants are black jeans. Chrysler Concord, the official car of turning all the gym TVs from sports to network news and then parking yourself on the center treadmill and waiting for somebody to come by so you can look over and say, Can you believe this? Chrysler Concord, the chariot of this guy. Hey man, do you have a moment? Can I have a moment of your time? The lady inside, I forgot my license. The lady inside won't sell me any beer. 
all I want is a 12 pack of Miller High Life. Here's 20 bucks. Can you go get me? Some hey, where are you going? Come on. You know, I thought you were neighborly. Hey, man, you, you got, got a minute. I'm just trying to get some beer inside. I don't have my license. Can you just, where are you going? Hey, man, help a brother out. I rock Camaro. For the husband who, <laughs> I rock Camaro. For the husband who shits himself but keeps singing happy birthday. <laughs> I rock Z, the official car of being extra nice to cops because you never know. 1987 Camaro I rock brought to you by failing the presidential fitness test. This was the future car for that one guy in your school cafeteria who, when the school served breadsticks, stuck one through his fly and walked around the cafeteria. 2020 Chevy Camaro. For the man who fell in love with a cam girl, and now the bank owns his house. 2009 Dodge Nitro, the official car of middle-aged men who ask, who's your daddy, just in case. This is a 1993 Mazda RX-7 FD. Twin rotor. Twin turbo. This is the car for the man who flexes while driving. Oh, I'm at a stoplight. I'm in my RX-7. Time to flex that forearm and look at you over my bicep. Oh, you want some of this? My dick is full of cheese. 1987 Jaguar XJ6. The official car of... I think we're done here. BMW 330CI. The official car of... I'm not racist, but... BMW 330CI. The official car of... I'd like to speak to your manager. Cadillac Cimarron. A car for cruising down the road to success. Except the road to success is paid by PennDOT. Cummins. For the man who likes Hunter S. Thompson, but only the one quote about how freedom dies if it isn't used. Cummins, for the man whose favorite videos are girls shooting guns. Oh yeah, Cummins, brought to you by Facebook videos from the driver's seat featuring these sunglasses. Uh, the video title is saying stuff, I'm telling you the real truth. Jeep Grand Cherokee, the official car for wannabe nomads and hippies in Shasta, California, selling bootleg acoustic alchemy tapes. Interceptor Utility, the official car of guys named Steve, going prematurely gray and spouses who will ask, but never understand, how my day really was. Hey, Honda Prelude, SI VTech, the official car of buying Swisher Sweets on your brother's ID. Jeep Commander, for the guy whose favorite beer is five beers. F-150, as American as forming your own band and then quitting that band when you don't become famous right away. Ford F-150, the official truck of I married my practice girl and pooped out a horde of practice children. F-150, for grown man posturing. It's squatting dick first over the toilet so your piss stream sounds stronger to the guy waiting outside the door. This sticker placates police. No red line, it just revs forever. Jeep Commander. Brought to you by saying, Thank you for your service. To the TSA. Commander. For a man who insists MREs taste good. This is the official car of Knife Guy. Commander. Brought to you by a flea market stand selling military-grade backpacks. The Jeep Cherokee Classic, the official car of furrowed brows and steel-cut oats. It's the original bushwhacker for like and steely Dan, King Crimson, the Allman Brothers Band, and four good minutes of missionary. It's a car for the formless deity whose purview is the American experience. It's an experience so saturated with nostalgia, BuzzFeed is probably writing an article about it as you're watching. Watching this. It's the official car of the Jontourage. They're all here, and they're all named variations of John. John. Jonathan. John without an H. Johnny. Jack and JJ. Rolling up to the gym in their tap out gear. Ed Hardy shirts in their duffel bag so they can leave straight from the weight room to the club, followed by an hour in the champagne room at Dan's Diamond Hyman! 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 This is
This is a car for the administrator who feels the last day of school should be the strictest one of all. Cut him off on the side of the road? That's a demerit. Flip him off when he takes too long at a four-way stop? That's a demerit. Demerit, 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 five demerits, and you'll have to stay after class with your pants around your ankles, taking thwacks from a ruler measuring one quarter of an inch thick. The A4 Quattro is for the guy who's square on the job, but a rhombus in the bedroom. He masturbates in dangerous places, and he never clears his search history, because he's secretly aroused by the possibility of getting caught and having to explain what fur affinity is. Jeep JK, for the 70-year-old Vietnam veteran with an aggressive of blonde comb over, rigidly saluting the flag while his double stuff Oreo wife sits in a collapsible nylon folding chair and claps to the predictable half note bass drum beat of Stars and Stripes Forever. Anyway, because the Jeep's a classic. Even if you're sick of it, you'll come back because it's familiar. It's the automotive equivalent of Hotel California. <clears throat> Dodge Cummins. You're wasting your money. Just buy a Toyota Tacoma and a Duke Nukem soundboard. Chevrolet Caprice, the car that comes off the line smelling like mothballs and super polygrip. 1999 Toyota Corolla, the official car for solar shield wearing Korean War veterans holding green reusable giant supermarket bags sitting on mall benches and staring at the white tiled floor while uptown funk plays with too much treble through ceiling speakers. 1999 Corolla, the official car of delivering the merchandiser. 1999 Corolla, this is the car for you if you're local Chinese buffet has pizza. 1999 Corolla, the official car of FaceTiming your way through your entire shift at the desolate Verizon wireless kiosk. Corolla, a dream ride for all of us introverts who need two benzos just to buy a new pair of Cross and Windsor jeans. 1999 Corolla, brought to you by... I'm good, just looking. Mirage G4. It's the automotive equivalent of your body waking up a few minutes before your alarm. Sure, you got a full night's sleep, but you can't help feeling robbed. Smart 4-2. A car for someone who responds to every cat video with, you're hurting it. The Smart 4-2. For the guy who thinks the Prius isn't pretentious enough, this is the chariot for daytime television enthusiasts who race to the vitamin shop to buy green tea extract because Dr. Oz told them they could still get a large popcorn at the movie theater as long as they took a tablet before for every meal. It's a car for belonging to vague sounding organizations because the Vector Corporation and Quest Diagnostics totally don't sound like tax shelters for the Legion of Doom. 1962 Buick LeSabre. A car that asks how to use that smart TV you bought him for Christmas. I just want to put on Mannix. I didn't used to need two clickers to put on Mannix. I wish you and your sister would stop buying me stuff. I just wanna watch Manic. 1995 Buick Skylark, brought to you by, let's just go see something starring Tom Hanks. And you know, it's rare to come across something so achingly normcore. It's the automotive equivalent of a youth pastor in cargo shorts and New Balances sitting backwards in a chair to talk to you about divorce. Buick Skylark, what meds am I on? Well, 150 milligrams of none of your goddamn business. Dodge Demon. The official car of the guy who has a girl who has an exit strategy. Cadillac Convertible. Brought to you by... I'll have the ham. Cadillac DeVille. The official car of driving from New York to Delaware because cartons of cigarettes are cheaper. Sponsored by licking the blow off of a stripper's balloon knot at four in the goddamn morning. And then rolling away with an exhaust note that sounds like magic carpet ride and conjures memories of dry hand jobs from roller derby girls. Calloused hands covered in chalk. Welcome to Pimp Slap, the car. Oldsmobile Bravada, the official car of the mother whose son got in school suspension for bringing ninja stars to school. Oldsmobile Bravada, you suck. Oldsmobile Bravada. You worked hard your whole life at the metal and ethnic slur factory. Now take your retirement with a luxury SUV to drive to Dee Dee's Diner, where you'll sit from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. and spread the newspaper across the entire booth table like a general planning an attack while Sonny Came Home by Sean Colvin plays overhead. This is it, Ronnie. This is retirement. Mercury Mariner, the official car of an Uber driver with a hard luck tale to tell. Mariner, brought to you by justifying your $4,000 figurine collection as self-care. Mercury Mariner, 
the official car of emergency commissions because funds are running out. Mariner, for a person who excuses himself from the room when they hear Jordan Peterson's voice come through your computer speakers, Mercury Mariner. It's a car for punishing your rear seat passengers, making your kids love their phones more than you, and prompting drive through bank tellers to ask you for a second form of ID. Imperial. A car for a medallion-wearing, mouth-breathing, Reuben-eating, sweet-tea-slurping business owner named Rich the Montpelier Dollar Franklin. Every question he asks you begins with, I got a proposition for you. 2007 Lincoln Town Car, Executive L. The official car of booger sugar breathing exercises off a pair of middle management butt cheeks. You can practically hear the corporate jargon in the exhaust notes. The data never lies. Let's take this offline. Put a pin in it. Going forward like we... Teamwork makes the dream work. My door is always open. Ambassador. The official car of that one guy. Okay. You've seen him. The one guy at Cars and Coffee. He shows up early, parks his car, and then walks away from his car. Yeah, he looks at other cars, but he waits. He waits till like a cycle of people go through. And then he pretends he doesn't own the car. He comes back to his car and pretends to be a spectator and hypes it up to strangers. You've seen it. Yeah. They don't make them like this anymore. This is a real classic. This is going to be worth something someday. I really like the owner. Do you see the owner? Has he been around? I like how he did this, this, and this. This is going to be worth something someday. They don't make them like this anymore. Nope. They don't make them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. They don't. Everybody else has left. He's just, they don't make them like this anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. He's just speaking to the air in front of him. It's like that scene at the end of The Aviator. It's a way of the future. It's a way of the future. It's a way of the future. The Focus RS is an open-minded varsity wrestler, and its Recaro seats bolstering arms are holding me by my pelvis, and I trust him. It's hard to move. I can't move enough to head check my blind spots. I can't move enough to look in the back seat, but... It's okay. It's okay. I trust Focus RS. Hold me. The Toyota Tacoma is just another four and a half thousand pound pickup truck, but put on an abbreviated Toyota racing development on the side, and it becomes a badge engineered smegma pot pie. Toyota Tacoma, sponsored by Hey, when did this song become classic rock? It's the pension pickup truck you've always dreamed of. It's catnip for other middle aged men looking for conversations in the gym parking lot. Tesla Model Y, the official car of Westchester. Do we mean Westchester, Pennsylvania? Does it matter? With a name like Westchester, the odds are high that you have all the money and the elasticity to blow yourself. Tesla Model Y, for the man whose two least favorite words in the English language are support ticket. 1993 Toyota Previa, a car for someone whose personality is finding themselves. Previa, a vessel for conversations that start with, Today I found myself at Stir and Scoff Coffee Company with a tall espresso. Really, Jeremy? That's how your story begins? Not 30 minutes earlier, when you got a bank account notification that your parents' bank-to-bank -bank transfer went through into your account? And Jeremy. It's called skipping class. Not self-care. Toyota Previa. For your boy toy partner, who is a little short on the rent this month because they bought a recreation Victrola. Toyota Previa, a van for people who think being random is a personality. Nissan Frontier, the car for you if your favorite part of a gaming podcast is where the hosts giggle at their own jokes. Nissan Frontier, the truck for you if your favorite part of a gaming podcast is when the hosts sing Nintendo music. If your favorite part is when they describe memes. If your favorite part is where they tell inside jokes that have nothing to do with the podcast narrative. If your favorite part is where they pretend to have sponsors. Nissan Frontier. If Tuesday was a truck. People remember Mondays 
because Monday sucks. They'll remember Wednesday because it's hump day and Thursday because it's almost Friday. You might remember Tuesday if you're lucky enough to have taco meat on hand, but Plymouth Valiant, sponsored by that point in a marriage where it's just two people faking orgasms, ooing and aahing just so they can go to sleep faster. They love one another enough to go through the motions, but in their head, they're just going through tomorrow's itinerary. Plymouth Valiant, you're giving me a raging hard off. Plymouth Super Deluxe, the car for a man who wishes he could live in Toontown. He dresses up like Eddie Valiant and wears tan trench coats in 90 degree summer sun. He carries bodega cigarettes in a steel case. He dramatically pulling them out and fake smoking them in full view of the bus stop. He pushes air forward through the cigarette and says stuff like, It's another mystery to no one. Plymouth Special Deluxe, the official car of Forget About Me, Save Yourselves! Saab 93, a conversation piece that encourages silence. Saab 93, the car you buy to complement the broken Omega you wear around. 2008 Saab 93 Sport Compi, the car for you when you want to know which wine pairs best with upper middle class guilt. Buick Regal Tour X, A car for saying, I drive a wagon. Tour X, brought to you by advertisements on the side of your wagon boasting that you own a wagon, like Wagon Mafia or Radio Flyer. Get it? So what? Buick Regal Tour X. For the driver who smokes weed vapes, but only if they're grape or root beer flavored. Tour X. The official car of your friend Billy, but now he wants you to call him Brody. He talks about Copper Mountain all the time, but when you finally go skiing with him, you find he uses his poles to stop. Studebaker Lark. The official car of the nuclear family. You have a dad who learned the value of pretending to like his job, and a wife who learned the value of pretending to like her husband, and a child too naive to know the difference. 1990 Buick Estate Wagon. For the man who drinks all day, but still thinks cannabis is a gateway drug. Buick Estate Wagon. The official car of liking the Beatles, but only before Revolver. Estate Wagon. Fueled by Reuben sandwiches at 11 a.m. and clapping along to We Will Rock You when it unfortunately pops up in the diner's Spotify mix. And upon hearing that, Buick Dad gyrates in his booth seat, slapping his farm hands on the table. Home fries bounce out of his plate. Buick Dad stomps and slaps and claps one quarter note behind Queen, crackling from overhead speakers. Now that's a real American, he beams, stabbing an index finger upward. And 21 minutes later, he's out in the parking lot, lighting his Nikes on fire. Subaru WRX STI. This car is a bar that only plays Africa by Toto. Subaru Impreza WRX STI, the automotive equivalent of a pickup artist. He is a dentist system of his own, and it works 30% of the time every time. It's the WRX system. Check out this outline. I mean, look at this damn thing. It's got a bigger spoiler than the end of the sixth sense. This is a car for the guy who's ever owned only one version of Microsoft Word. The pirated kind. The official car of, Nah, I never jerk off. There's always strip mall beaver lining up for my wild boar. This swap is for the guy who insists ring girls are essential to MMA. 2JZ swap. The official car of, Yeah, I did it myself. Single turbo 2J. I wasn't even spooling, bro. Subaru Impreza RS. Sponsored by all the debt that piles up due to my free cams addiction. 1991 Honda Beat. It's a 1991 Honda Civic that got hit with a Mario Kart lightning bolt. 2000 Honda Insight. The Insight debuted in the year 2000, and it's the official car of Excel spreadsheet junkies with hard dicks for data. (laughs) Insight drivers wear polo shirts and button every button right up to the top, including that choker. Mazda Speed Miata. The official car of a guy who makes plans with you, and then when he picks you up, says, I just gotta make a few stops. I hope you like back roads. Hold on to your Frappuccino.
Mazda Speed Miata. For the guy whose idea of flirting is, hey, I had a dream we bung last night. Pretty wild, huh? Anyway, how was your night? It's a car for the self-styled, cultured gentleman. He spent his youth listening to Silverchair and grew up to be a man who listens to nothing and wears Oakleys. He has Spotify Premium, but only for Rogan. He's never been in a fight, but he just knows that when the time comes, he'll be handing out super kicks like the Young Bucks, because every man believes he has the potential to handle himself in the moment of truth. Adrenaline will take over and awaken the dormant cowboy Cerrone inside him, and the rest will be 1 a.m. bowling alley history. But believe me, you can catch the fade anytime. All you get when you see a Volvo 940 is the fear that a guy named Jason is going to whip out his guitar and start singing Hey There Delilah at the barbecue. Volvo 940. For the man whose phases are as follows, and in this order, Dungeons and Dragons, Emo, David Lynch Movies, IPA, Stocks, Edge Play, Latex Inflatable Suits, Chippendale Rescue Rangers Cosplay, One Back Tattoo That Takes Two Years to Complete, Trains, bird watching, early bird dinner specials, Bible study groups, dementia, breathing, burial. Oh yeah, this is the automotive equivalent of March after no fat February. This is for people who wear their car as a costume because it's going to define who they are for as long as they own it and maybe for a little while after. Lotus Evora GT, the official car of good weather and bad habits. It wants you to feel your tension giving way like a wrapper on a melted starburst. Tesla Model X Long Range Plus, the official car of government weed. I mean, yeah, it's weed, I guess. Shouldn't rename it the government mids. You're not getting that Andy Kaufman. You're smoking that Grover Cleveland because you have to go back in for a second non-consecutive try just to be sure it's as mid-level as you thought. Deuce and a half, brought to you by Stolen Valor, M35A2, the official car of Uncle Mike. He saw an RKO and tried it out that night on Cousin Dieter without warning. Mike's arbitration date is Monday morning at 7.10 a.m. Deuce and a half. My favorite movie is Lord of War, starring Nicolas Cage. I watched the AK-47 monologue scene just to nut. M35, the official car of spitting on the ground whenever someone says the word Ruger. Deuce and a half. Big enough to carry a dependipotamus out of your life. 1970 M35A2, deuce and a half. For the man whose favorite Mexican restaurant is Taco Bell. Because it's where he runs the least risk of running into a real Mexican. Deuce and a half. The official truck of going to a sperm bank every two weeks for an updated sperm count to confirm your virility. Charger Scat Pack. The official car of filling your Facebook with topical news jokes and none of them are funny. Scat Pack. Brought to you by doing donuts in front of a police station because you live for the moment. Scat Pack. The official car of wearing a back the blue t-shirt at the same time you're carrying an AR with a 3D printed receiver. Scat Pack Charger. The official car of Bad Dad. He gets to have his leather jacket time, but only when allowed. He walks out to his car playing George Thorogood on his iPhone, and then restarts the song as he leaves. He uses lines like, When mommy's away, the boys will play. And the boys are his pony kegs of Miller Lite. He takes a corner and says stuff like, Time to let this baby off his leash. And then he drives his beer distributor in back. 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack. For the man whose fetish is women who sound like Alexa. 2014 Honda Equus Signature. A car you buy new to perfectly recreate the feeling of borrowing your parents' used car. 2014 Honda Equus. The car you buy when you finally get the financial compensation the commercial promised. 2014 Hyundai Equus. This is a great car if you like listening to audiobooks. It's as if this car doesn't want to draw attention to the experience of its own operation. It's like a waiter who doesn't want to interrupt your conversation to take your order. Or a spouse who chooses every word carefully because they know the next argument could be the one that sends him back to bumble. 
Honda Equus Signature. Or is it Equus? I don't even care. This car is so boring. It's the official car of that married couple that just looks like each other now. Sixth generation Montes. The official cars of never turning off. I swear, I never see these uncouth kegerator, ke Chevrolet Monte Carlo, the official car of having owning a kegerator on your bucket list. Brought to you by answering a phone call with, yeah, instead of, hello. Chevy Monte Carlo, the official car of taking one last drag from a cool cigarette, holding it in, flicking the butt away, walking inside Ace Hardware, and exhaling only when the automatic doors close behind you. 2004 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. It's the sports memorabilia room your uncle never lets you enter. It's the car for that neighbor whose favorite number is whatever stretch of highway he just came off of. And whose favorite story to tell at parties is about the work zone he had to get through to get here. This is the car for a man who huffs bowling shoe spray and wears a t-shirt that proudly reads, Eating ass, don't knock it till you try it. 2004 Chevrolet Monte Carlo Open Container Music Festival Special Edition. The official car of your stepdad, Wayne, who has pizza and pussy tattooed on his left hand so he can point to it with his right hand anytime your mom asks what he wants to eat for dinner. Kia Spectra. The official car of a way too old guy at Shorty's Bar in Kutztown. Show me an over 40 man who still likes to party, and I'll show you a man who isn't learning from his mistakes. Kia Spectra, sponsored by Strap Dick. This is the lowest low point of Chrysler. This is the official car of asbestos and unfiltered cigarettes. The Dodge Aspen is for a man who's seen some things, and he sips Boilo while coasting along Route 78 on a desperate journey to forget. The Aspen is a motorized Merv Griffin special that runs off of 87 and hooker spit. The Nissan 300ZX was more hyped than Waterworld. Yes, I wanted to touch everything. It fed into me. It was so fancy! I bought the 1994 Nissan 300ZX. Mm. It's what the children like. So fancy! Oh yes, the Corvette C4. It was fancy, but my tastes have matured. Oh, my nipple. The... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Record that. Keep that in. Keep that in. The interior. <laughs> the interior was too low rent and impoverished for the likes of me. So I've gone for Japanese quality this time. Faster than its smelly American car. On principle. Corvette. Interesting. We all know the best things come in by boat. Shoes, wine, art. Why would I buy my car at the same place a farmer buys his truck? Uh, uh. Frankly, I think the Corvette brand is a little bit old and tired. I mean, if you get a new wife, you don't get it from the same house her mother was raised in, do you? When I get a new wife, I'm not going to get one with the same last name as the one I found before. Oh, so fancy. I like my cars like I like my women. Young. And I dare say it is the toast of the town. It's so fancy that I think my Porsche parts might fit. Oh, I have a paper towel roll filled with micro-machines. It goes inside the buttocks. Oh, oh. Oh, heavens, it's stuck. I feel like driving the Z is my way of bringing Japan to America because I've shipped so many things from America to Japan. Like jobs. <laughs> Here's the 90s, the time of the haves and the have-nots, and I am a have, as you know. Oh, and speaking of haves, I've recently procured a nice sun tea jar. I put it over my genitals and remove the air. Oh, my ball sack becomes the size and texture of a delectable and decorative cantaloupe. Uh. Ha 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 